flying cars, meet the helicopter that will make sci-fi a reality. The idea of being able to take off and speed through the skies in a flying car is no longer just a pipe dream. A range of businesses from startups to established aerospace companies are vying to create and commercialize these vehicles, which are meant to lift us and transform our daily lives from ground-level highways to airborne skyways. The designs of these vehicles vary, but some may resemble futuristic helicopters or enormous drones. Others are meant to function as air taxis. At the forefront of all of this is Marcus Lang, a Canadian engineer and inventor. In the rolling hills and open skies of Workworth, Ontario, he came up with a novel way to drive. I think we've all had dreams of complete three-dimensional freedom. I remember as a young boy walking to school and sort of wondering if there would ever be an aircraft where you could just jump in and be able to take off vertically and fly wherever you want to. It was in the summer of 2009 when Lang was working on a different aviation project that he began to realize his dream could become a reality. I did some calculations with the current technology and realized at that point that electric VTOL was not only possible but practical, and that was the eureka moment. So this is where it all happened. Of course, this is nothing like what this place was like when it was a full shop, but I still have a few pieces left. He went to work in his basement and was able to build the prototypes of what is now known as Blackfly, a new form of vehicle that doesn't need a runway to fly. It's an electric VTOL or EVHVOL, which is short for electric vertical takeoff and landing. I think our house became a factory. The basement was used for basically doing all the structural work. The kitchen was used for manufacturing motors. We used to bake the motors in the oven. Boy, would that stink. The moment of truth. Lang flew his first proof of concept in October 2011 in his front yard. I found myself at the end of our driveway, my friends and neighbors behind a barrier of cars that we had set up, and I thought, just like in skiing, I'll do a skidding turn in front of them. I still kind of remember thinking, this isn't going to end well, but the propulsion systems reacted so quickly that after landing at that point, I realized how incredible this technology was. A few years later, Lang relocated the majority of his business to Silicon Valley, a hop of tech startups and innovations in Moira, California. It was in this location that his company's founders secretly got to work perfecting Blackfly, a personal aerial vehicle that is intended for one person to have the freedom to go virtually anywhere they choose. The wonderful thing about our car is that it's considered an ultralight aircraft in both the United States and Canada. To fly one of these aircraft, you need to get an ultralight license, which is also rather simple to obtain. What makes it distinctive? In my opinion, the ability to operate is what makes it most unique. It is incredibly novel and incredible that regular people can learn how to fly this aircraft safely in just two days and a few hours of simulation. Anyone over the age of 18, which is our kind of limit, can learn how to fly this aircraft safely. What speed are the promoters currently running at? Kristen Amendon is the Director of Operations, Flight Testing and Propulsion Lead at Opener. The aircraft is almost entirely composed of carbon fiber including the wings, fuselage and propellers. We also have our in-house design and built electric motors, which are the most powerful electric motors available for their size. They weigh about 4.5 pounds and have a horsepower of just over 25. One of the special features of this all-electric car, according to Menden, is that it is amphibious, meaning it can take off and land on water. It also has auto-land features, which essentially mean that as you approach the ground, the aircraft will take over and land you so that you can land, whether you press return to home to land back where you want to be, or you move it to a new location. Blackfly is controlled by a joystick, can fly in 20 mile per hour winds, and operates in extremely cold weather. Anyone up to 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighing 200 pounds or less can use it in the United States, which is our primary market. We have very serious weight restrictions, so American vehicles have a 20 plus mile range for an operator that's 200 pounds. In the United States, we're restricted to 62 miles an hour. In Canada, we don't have those weight constraints and also we don't have speed constraints. According to Lang, all testing is done autonomously and Blackfly has flown more than 35,000 miles in test flights. It's unbelievable. I could not have conceived where we are today from where we were 10 years ago. Developing Blackfly doesn't just happen in one swift moment, it's an evolutionary process and to date, we have built and flown 40 aircraft. Every single aircraft has been an improvement on its predecessor. The EVTOL field is hyper-competitive, so Lang needed to find ingenious creative minds to help fulfill his dream, and he found them in Canada. Menton and her classmate Eleanor Lee, who is now the plant manager, had just finished their mechanical engineering degrees at the University of Toronto when they got the call from Lang. Both signed on and moved to the US before they even knew exactly what project they'd be working on. Marcus came along and said, oh, we're making this huge carbon epoxy part. Do you want to be part of our team? And I just said, yes, yes, here I am. I first met Marcus on a phone call the day before my last exam at university. 
At the time, the company was completely in stealth mode and wasn't able to say what the product was, who the investors were, or any of the technical details, but I could get from the phone call that it was a pretty exciting and innovative opportunity, and decided to leap to jump on board. It wasn't until 2018 that he started to pull back the curtain and give the world a look at Blackfly and how it operates. He had been testing in secret for years and recruiting at the same time. He even offered us a tour. This is our testing lab, where you can see various propulsion systems in action that are operational around the clock. Lastly, we have what we call the punch test, which essentially operates by going from a standstill to approximately 80% of the maximum thrust in 1.2 seconds. The purpose of testing is to ensure that your systems are extremely reliable. That was quite the shove. I suppose that does the trick. Success has taken a while, but it appears that the effort is paying off. On the first day of flight testing, for example, a few things went wrong and we were only attempting to fly 10 miles. Over the years as a team, we have flown 5 miles, 10 miles, 30 miles, and at 10,000, 20,000, and 40,000 miles. We also flew in front of 60,000 people, which is truly incredible. All of that has contributed to my success, as well as the success of the company, and I'm incredibly proud to have been a part of it. Asterisk, asterisk, public presence, asterisk, asterisk. Here she's in July 2021, making a very unusual public appearance alongside Lee Menton and Lang. They are pilots of Blackfly, a spectacular aircraft display that attracts thousands of spectators every year. The flight is amazing, offering a panoramic picture of the area you are flying over. I described this experience to a few folks at Oshkosh. When you're in an airplane, you do feel like the aircraft is you. That is still amazing and just keeps getting better and better. Christina demonstrated that for me. Asterisk, asterisk, security, asterisk, asterisk. The business adds that while it can now only fly above cities and in rural areas, safety is the top priority and intends to begin selling black flies shortly. The whole point of the aircraft is that for someone without a pilot's license to be able to fly it, it must be safe. To that end, it must have a triple modular redundant system, which consists of three systems so that if one fails, there are still two that are operating. This allows you to know which system has failed and which one you should be evacuating from. The aircraft also has a parachute, which we consider to be the last line of defense. The initial versions of the aircraft will probably be pricey. Lang is keeping the exact amount under wraps, but he thinks that as the industry grows, more people will be able to afford it. So this is the end of our today's video. Do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.